Hello everyone, welcome back to Face Gone, part 4. We just got into how Morrigan had given birth. The child was born healthy, despite my sickened soul and the resentment I harboured against him. For a few minutes after his birth, as I lay holding him and recovering from my ordeal, I allowed myself a glimpse of a life that could have been if I had not been the goddess of war, if Cuchulain had not wished simply to use me and cast me aside, if the Vedern curse had never coiled around my soul, whatever light that moment had brought was soon snuffed out. That sour, bitter, burning resentment grew once more, fueled by the dark glamour I wanted to be rid of the child, I called forth one of my servants, and I charged her, take that child, take that child away, leave it on the boundary of my realm. She obeyed without question, let the elements of I kill him, I told her, the pain of the darkness crushing my heart under its weight, for I cannot bear to look at him any longer. But, I added, remembering who his father was and knowing that High was even stronger, before you do, let me see him one last time. Reluctantly, the young woman handed him over. It was painful to gaze into his eyes, so green, they conjured memories of Isle's vast fields and the endless canopy of wheeled, glowing beneath the summer sun. The palm and pain of my curse dug into my heart, and I nearly cried out. Whatever peace mine had been was dashed away, burned into thick ash, choking me every time I tried to breathe. I place a guise upon you, my son. I rasp my eyes burning with impending wrath. I pressed my palm to his chest and conjured my symbol, the mark which tied a failure in life to my service. Should you survive after I cast you away, you will some day return to serve me, and should you disobey me, your life and your glamour will be forfeit. A sound of anguish drew my attention back to the Rain slicked a battlefield to the dwindling light. The memory from so long ago floating away like smoke scattered in the wind. Cadane had defeated all but one of my Comoric. Yet his strength and his resolve was failing. Like his father's pride and warped sense of humour would be his downfall. He would let his supposed love for this, well, I say fool to him. I mean, it's going to destroy him. Utter fool. I muttered this again and again under my breath, my eyes burning with impatience and rage. And did he not realise the anguish love would bring him? In the next instant, my comoreg found its opening and plunged its wicked claws deep into Caden's abdomen. The Vedern magic swelled within me like a black cloud of smoke and fire, swelling my heart and my sentiment. It might have conjured forth. Agony, like searing mage fire, coursed through my blood, and I had to fight to keep control. That pathetic whelp of Danu's still watched, screaming my son's name. She would pay me no heed, at least for the next few minutes. I drew in a breath of the damp air and let my eyes close. The dark magic, that dark, always trying to overtake me, licked at my senses, its dominance no match for my own. That was my fate as a Tuathadi a goddess among the mortals, cursed to be Fair Duen. Any 
normal, Fay Lauren. Man or woman would succumb and lose all their faculties under the spell of such dark power. Not me. The insidious magic pushed me and warped me to become what I am now. The goddess of war and strife. Unable to feel that which my brethren could feel. Joy, happiness, love. But it would never take my mind from me. It would never grant me that one blessing. Instead, I struggled every walking hour beneath its weight and its wrath, knowing exactly what I was missing. All because of one night with one man whose glamour had somehow overridden my curse. A gaze I could never break. I opened my eyes to see Kate then fail with the last Kumorak. The dark magic burned deeper, eager to get hold of his well of glamour. The little strailing broke free of a protective shield of magic and rushed over to him, sobbing as his life drained away. Good, I whispered to myself, the dark magic easing back to its place beside my own glamour. It is done. I was numb. There had been so much pain this time, so very much. But somehow, I made my way over to Cadern's lifeless body. I snarled something at the girl, telling her to back away so I could claim my glamour. And then hers as well. I saw no need to keep my promise now. And I doubted my curse would let me walk away from this battlefield while such delicious fresh magic sat right there, right before me. <clears throat> and then I saw it in her eyes, that sensation so alien to me, the look Kaden had given her not too long ago. Somehow it burned through my defences. It singed the edges of my Federn curse, and for a split second my heart was allowed to experience what it should have this dark morning, love, pride and sorrow so deep. I thought I might fall into it and never arise again. A small gust of cold air brushed against my face, and it felt as though a thread of ice traced down my cheek. Gasping, I backed away as the girl's own glamour are burst forth like a thunderclap directly overhead. I had thought she and Kidane to be fools, weak for allowing themselves to fall in love. I knew from personal experience that particular sentiment generally only led to ruin, ruin and pain. Yet this half-breed Philoran woman burned before me, not with the excruciating, punishing scorn of further magic, but with that same radiance and power I had known only a few times in my life. This Megan girl, with her brand new glamour and her ignorance of the other world, shone forth like a star. Her magic, powered not by Isle's magic or glamour stolen from another, her power came from love. Never in my life had I backed down from a challenge, for I was always the most formidable opponent anyone would ever face. But this girl had found a way to defeat my curse magic, and she didn't even know it. Snarling in frustration, I called upon what remained of my dwindling power, and transformed. Becoming an animal shape, I beat my black raven's wings, and let... The gust, the gust I knew, that wind take me, nearly succumbing to the strailing's attack. I did not care, I had to outpace the punishing vengeance on my gaze as the feather magic sought to crush what my heart dared to feel. Calling out in anguish and rage, I pushed myself higher, blending with the dark clouds above and disappearing out of reach. I would not forget this girl and her wrath. Unlike Coochie Lane so long ago, how she had shown me once more that which I was denied. 
When I recovered, I would return. My power multiplied tenfold to rip from her body the one thing that would satisfy my curse's insatiable appetite, at least for a while. Perhaps then I would know a small moment of tranquility as I streaked across the storm-tossed sky, staying just ahead of Fidon's wrath. I allowed myself for the first time in many, many years, most likely the last time, to examine the grandest emotion any living thing could possess. I stretched my mind, pushing it past the murky darkness, which blocked out all the light, and I caught a glimpse of a shadow of memory, a picture of Kidane's face, the morning he was born, the scent of his new silky skin, the sound of his tiny voice as he slept, the rapid beat of his heart, and just before the drowning, poisonous pain rushed in to fill all the spaces in my heart. A new torment cut through me, a sorrow far worse than anything my gaze had ever thrown at me. And this one hurt the worst, because this time it wasn't a curse. The pain was real. And that is the end of Face Gone. And it is the story of Morrigan and her son fighting, obviously. And she kills her son. But um, not, it depends how well you know the goddesses and gods to how well you would know the story. The pain she's talking about is, at the end, is the loss of her son that suddenly kicked in right at the end. So, yeah. Thank you for listening. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And many blessings.